Now this is a puzzle game. From what I see, it has something to do with robots. Now, as many of you may or may not know, my brain, it looks like a marble. It's smooth. It's not really at all. So, I have no idea if I will be able to even come near. see where this pretty game takes us. Wow! <laughs> wow, it's such a nice change of scenery compared to what I normally did. Whoa, wow, wow, yes. wow. Behold, child. You are risen from the dust, and you walk in my garden. Hear now my voice, and know that I am your maker. And I am called Elohim. Seek me in my temple, if you are worthy. Oh, because I'm just dumb. Friend? All across this land, I have created trials for you to overcome. And within each, I have hidden a sigil. It is your purpose to seek these sigils, for thus you will serve the generations to come and attain eternal life. I don't know if you notice your uh, my fellow subscriber, but well, not fellow, my subscribers, but I had robot hands when I was So am I a robo? Orange, orange versus blue. Let's start with the easy puzzles. Right? Switch out of reach. I just move so fast. Okay, I can't use that. Any other materials? Again, why do you allow me to run so fast? The shapes you are collecting are not mere toys. They are the sigils of our name. Each brings you closer to eternity. Huh. So I'm spelling out the name. 
The guardians of this land may harm you, but do not resent them, for they are my servants, and they challenge you only so that your faith might be strengthened. Now, roll, roll, don't Robot. Well done, child. Only one more sigil is needed. need to collect all sigils at once. You are free to return to this place whenever you choose. You sure about that, bub? Oh, buddy, oh, buddy, oh, buddy, oh, pal. I do not. 
Oh, I almost ran straight into you. No, 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 no. Speed that they gave me. I'm not gonna lie. I can go. Hey, that's a completely different one. Simple. 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 You are most diligent. Perhaps this trait will serve you well in times to come.
so weird. Sorry that I'm a little odd at the meeting. I know you were nervous, but the truth is that so was I. This is maybe hard to believe, but you intimidate me. You're so young and you've already accomplished so much. If the situation wasn't so grim, I might even be jealous. It's also something I wanted to clarify. I really thought, nominally speaking, I'm head researcher here. Researcher here. But this is your project and everyone will respect that. Yes, I know, you're not used to working like this, but as of today, you're in charge. No pressure. Gee. Let's do this! Not yet. Uh, let's go with Athena. Chapter 6, Athena in the Garden of Hesperides. Did not trust them, but move with such grace, nobility, that... Um, then a strange garden of tears and cards that he led her to a place where the crowns of the brass trees seemed to grow the breath or made a kind of chamber strangely reminiscent of a chapel. Milled the chamber grew a smaller tree made of bright blue steel. And upon this tree grew a single golden apple. This apple, the nymphs said in unison, their eyes aglow, confers the gift of deathlessness. True wisdom. Many heroes, and not a few villains, have come to claim it. All have faltered in the final step, for you must know that deathlessness reveals the morality of the world, and true wisdom and its unending folly. Who would take this burden upon themselves? Some say that Heracles have flowed 45 to the 45 death, gazing from the stars. Okay. I opened up Athena, figured out. Uh, well, the way I see it, the world isn't gonna come with a manual. You gotta figure it out for yourself. A bit here, a bit there. Put it together. Try to make sense of it. I'm pretty sure there is a truth, but that doesn't mean everyone claims to know what really does. Then again. That doesn't have to be a bad thing. We live in an amazing world, and searching for the truth can be a real adventure. Unless it's good for the brain. Anyway, just some rambling thoughts from your old man. Don't let this stuff get you down. You're young. You've got loads of time to figure it all out. Love, Dad. Step into the light, child, and my temple will be revealed to you. No. Ooh. I think I know what I need to do here.
that one will be a lot harder. There has to be some secret or something back here. No, just some basic puzzles. Alrighty then. You walk now upon the stones of my temple, whence many gates lead, and know that I have other temples, for my garden is greater than your eye can encompass, and all these worlds I made for you. Oh, how lovely. Level one, I guess. Oh, do I get an entry? Oh. Ah, well, since I'm already here. Let this be our covenant. These worlds are yours, and you are free to walk amongst them and subdue them. But the great tower. There you may not go, for in the day that you do, you shall surely die. Wow, maybe you can act. When I was a little girl, one of our teachers, Mrs. Higgins, told us to make a time capsule, write letters to the future so one day we could remember what it was like to be children. I thought it was stupid, so I didn't do it, which I really regret. So, <laughs> I guess I'm going to make one now. Bury it in the archive instead of under a tree. I don't know if anybody will ever find it, but somehow it seems important to keep talking, to keep thinking, for as long as I can. As is your purpose. But your choices must be your own. Therefore, I will not guide you unless it is necessary. What's that supposed to mean? What else do I need to do? 
Jesus. See, because, uh, well, I don't know, the landscape keeps glitching. Not big glitches.
my first day in the institute in for applied pneumatics. On the way to work, I'm terrified. What if they don't like me? What if they're all geniuses and I'm a complete buffoon? Maybe they were just kidding about letting me work there. I'm trembling. I walk in. Right at the entrance, there's a life-size pole booster of Jeff Goldblum. What the hell? When I get, then I get it. Institute for Applied Pneumatics. Ian, Dr. Ian Malcolm of Jurassic Park movies. Jeff Goldblum. Dr. Cerebald. Cerebhite shows up smiling. We are trying to find a cool acronym. Back then, back when the institute was founded, she says. Dinin, Iapen, Dinapno. It all sounded stupid. So we didn't just want to call it Ian, because, well, that's a name. Then someone made a joke about calling it Jeff, and it kind of stuck. So we're officially called Ian, but if you ever hear anyone referring to Jeff, that's our internal name. I guess, I know, I know, bloody geeks. Ooh, Talos Prince is That's what this game is called after all. <laughs> well, it's true that in day Dallas constructed the giant Talos, or, as others say, he was the creation of Hephaestus. What we may be certain of is that he was made of bronze, and he had the one vein within which floated liquid substance like blood, which some claim was quicksilver, and others it was ichor, which was as foes in the veins of the gods. The loss of that liquid caused him to die. As a man dies, he loses his blood. May we not then say that Talos, though, created as a machine or a toy, had all the essential properties of a man, he moved of his own volition, he spoke and he could be spoken to, had wishes and desires. Indeed, in the table full of Argonauts, that was the cause of his downfall. If then a machine may have all the properties of a man, and act as a man while driven only by an indigenous plan of its construction and the interaction of its materials according to the principles of nature, then does it not follow that man may also be seen as a machine? This contracts all the schools of metaphysics, yet even the most faithful philosopher cannot live without his blood. Neat! Okay, so note one, novel's first sentence. She woke up in an impossible place, knowing nothing. Signifies more than the beginning of another amnesia-based mystery. Though we should not go so far as to read the entire work as allegory, rather while taking the science, fictional novus at the core of the narrative that's face value. We should... Corrupted... Note 2. Having no inherent knowledge of the nature of it, forced to rely on what we are told by others, and what our own subjective, flawed, limit senses tell us. Corrupted, and objectively reality, matter, come into conflict. Note 3. When in Chapter 16, A Second Awakening in the Kingdom of Artemis, the protagonist questions her mentor on the corrupted, a meaningful interpretation of can only be achieved by the synthesis of Hey, that should be everything in the world. Well, I don't know what these little stars are. Okay, that'll have to be it for this episode. Uh, if you like this episode, um, like, subscribe, and I guess I'll see you next time where we can solve more puzzles in this game.